Did you miss that second news article Ubisoft snuck in at the end of last month? Well, I'm here to tell you what it was all about, and share with you what some of the most interesting comments were from the official forum. Hello fellow space monkeys, this is the Mildly Morose Man, otherwise known as Dan or Dan the Man, whichever you fancy. I am here to bring you another thought-provoking video on the video game Beyond Good and Evil 2. Be sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date on all things Beyond Good and Evil 2. So, the article reminds us of some important features of Soma, that moon where all of the gameplay footage has taken place so far. Soma is a moon orbiting around the gas giant Dius. It does not rotate, so one side of the moon is constantly being pummeled by meteorites from outer space. This side of the moon is called the Raka. The meteorites that rain down on this side of the moon contain the important resource, Diwalite. If you remember from a couple of months ago, we learned that Diwalite is a precious resource in System 3 for various reasons. It can be programmed to function as nanobots, accomplishing all sorts of tasks. It can be built into state-of-the-art engines, and Diwalite is the resource that has been pre-programmed with specific strains of DNA in order to create clones in System 3. So this stuff is important, and more of it will be found on Naraka, the dark side of the moon. But here's what the article says about the work environment in Naraka. Forced by their corporate masters and with the false hope of freedom, hybrids brave meteorite impacts and risk their lives in a harsh environment to gather the dangerous and powerful resource raining down from the skies. So Ubisoft asked the community, when we are space pirate captains in the new game, what will our strategy be for Naraka? Will we try to free slaves by force or will we focus on stealing the Dewalite from their cargo ships? Here are some of my favorite comments from the official forums. Vulcan is hoping to see gameplay from this section of the moon at E3 this year, and I couldn't agree with him more. I feel like it could happen, but although we have seen a lot of Ganesha City, we haven't seen a lot from there in terms of working gameplay systems like quests, merchants, and minigames. So I have a feeling that they will only show more gameplay from Ganesha City specifically. But this time we might check out Golden Ganesha in order to experience something like the death races or the blood sports that are going on there. Still, I'd be jazzed to see Naraka in action this year. Prince Lettuce thought it would be cool to have different starting scenarios for different types of characters. It makes sense that these different types of characters would have a different starting location and scenario. It would be cool to see this in the game. Lord Krillos gave an interesting scenario where the player's actions had both positive and negative effects. In the scenario that he created, while you were stealing from one of the big cargo ships, you tried to help out some of the slaves, but the revolt that was then instigated resulted in half of the precious Dewalite being destroyed. While you lost some of the loot along the way, you would gain a positive reputation with the slave miner population across Naraka. I think I would appreciate the sense of realism that these positive and negative consequences would bring about in the game. Kaluk is not interested in freeing people. But he brings up an interesting point about the slaves. Freedom alone isn't enough for the slaves. After the fact, they would need food, money, a place to stay. And if slavery is genetically based, as we have seen so far, anytime a monkey-human hybrid is seen out in public, other characters should react to the fact that a slave miner is actually walking as a free man or woman in public and not working on the Naraka mines. It becomes obvious why piracy is such a common thing in System 3. It's one of the only ways to live outside of the system of slavery and rigid class distinctions. So I wonder if some of these narratives will end not on the high note of freedom, but maybe we will experience more complex stories. Like you freed a slave, but you get robbed by another crew of pirates. You've got no way to pay all of your crew, so some of these slaves willingly return to slave mine because at least they can count on the paycheck. And there's a lot of possibility here to tell really gritty, true-to-life stories where sometimes the decision to be made is the best choice between two bad options. So do these things spark any ideas for you about the game? Leave your comments down below or start a discussion on the Reddit page. Check out the official forums if you want to see more from the community. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching and be back for the next one if you want to hear more about Beyond Good and Evil 2.